Would you like to have a more meaningful, quiet time with Jesus? Well, in this two-part series, I'm going to be sharing some of the things that helped me. But in part one, I'm also going to give you a peek into the lives of three of my dearest friends. Because here's the deal, you guys. No matter the season of life you're in, Jesus wants an intimate friendship with you. I was in the middle of one of those terrible, not-so-good days. A getting older, feeling defeated season that happens around April 19th every year when I received a birthday card with this picture on it. It captured everything I'd been feeling that day. All the hula hoop responsibilities swirling around me, friend, pastor's wife, Bible study teacher, and the big one, little league mother. How does she do that, I wondered. Well, my husband took the kids to baseball and I had a cup of tea and a couple of chocolate chip sedatives. I looked at the card again and I felt the Lord just whisper to my heart, Joanna, She's found her center, and she's allowing everything to move around that. That's exactly what I wasn't doing. My life more resembled a pinball machine bouncing off one responsibility to another before disappearing down a black hole. When Jesus told Martha that Mary had chosen the better part, I believe he was inviting her to that kind of centered relationship with him that we all need. The one thing that was needed and yet so often we miss it because we don't take time to center our lives around Jesus. But what does that really mean? I've been a good girl wanting to do good things, but when it comes to spiritual disciplines, well, to be honest, I've always struggled. I was great on Sundays, but when it came to prayer, worship, and Bible study, I couldn't seem to consistently bring them into my day-to-day -day life. So what does intimacy with God really look like? I've asked a few friends to share with us some things they've incorporated into their own lives to connect with God. Thanks so much for having coffee with me, you guys. It's such an honor just to be able to share life and talk about what our walk with the Lord looks like. So excited to have my daughter Jessica with me, my friend Christy and Sherry, and. This whole idea of daily devotions or a quiet time can feel so loaded. Uh, does that ever trip you up? Yeah, I mean, it's difficult because, you know, what if you don't get to it daily? Mm -hmm. And what if it's not quiet? And <laughs> you know, all those sort of things. I mean, I don't have kids yet, but, but I know you guys do. And, um, and that doesn't come easy. Quiet time does not come easy. But like you speak about in the book, you know, you really have to set aside time. And getting in the habit of doing mm -hmm. that setting aside the time is the difficult part. Yeah. yeah, it really is. And I used to get so tripped up because if I couldn't do it perfect, then I tend to not do it at all. Yeah. And I had so many expectations of what I thought it had to be. Right. And one of the things I want to do in this time is just kind of dismiss that mm -hmm. because really this is about relationship. Right. And each one of us, it's going to look different because each one of us communicate connect with the Lord in different ways. And, mm -hmm. But I'd love to hear, what are some ways that you kind of brought some new life, fresh life into your time with the Lord? Well, I've got a house full of little kids, and so quiet time just never, ever happens because <laughs> it's never quiet at my house. Yeah. And so, um, like, like what you were talking about, sometimes it can feel discouraging, like you have in, this, in your mind that you have to be in this quiet room, sitting there for hours. And so one thing that has revolutionized my life is just getting apps on my phone, mm -hmm. yeah. um, the Bible on my phone, devotionals mm -hmm. on my phone, and when I'm sitting in the carpool lane, I'll pull up a verse of the day, and not only when I'm driving, I'll say it to my kids, have them repeat it. it, but then mm -hmm. I'll, I'll memorize it throughout the day. I'll just mm -hmm. pull it up whenever I have five minutes and try and Beautiful. just go over it, and just realizing that when it fits in my schedule, right. that I'm, I'm getting that into my heart, even if it doesn't look like sitting you know, quietly, yes. you know, which I love to have happen occasionally, right. but in order for it to be more regular, I yeah. had to get more creative. It's totally true. And how much time do we spend in the car right. that's just really yeah. wasted in yeah. some senses? I mean, you can listen to the radio and listen to Christian songs, and you are built up through that. Mm -hmm. But for us, it's kind of the same thing. My husband and I are going through a devotional that are, is actually part of my agenda. It has mm -hmm. at the top, you know, read Genesis 1 through 3. And um, so we, we do that when we're driving. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just play it back. And there'll be some times when I'm realizing that I'm paying, obviously, hopefully I'm paying attention to the road, 
<laughs> but but I'm not really paying attention to the words. So you, yeah. you kind of scooch back a little bit and, right. and replay it. But it does. It it helps with the consistency because you're you're heading to work, and as you head to work, you just press play mm -hmm. and you go, and it just it helps you. It helps the rhythm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I think the, the key is flexibility mm -hmm. and really finding what works for you. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not feeling like it has to be a certain way, but also then being willing to be flexible within yeah. that. Because then there, there are seasons where, you know, maybe it's just that five minutes. And then there are those times where the Lord's going, I want you to come away. And you were telling me about what God's been doing in this season of your life. Just the you know extended time that I haven't had for so many years right. that I'm just loving once again because I'm not working at this point. We moved recently and so I'm, I'm not working at a job and so I have that extended yeah. time. Yeah. And it's just, it's what I used to get. Right. And it's, it's been so wonderful mm -hmm. to just have those extended times. That's awesome. Yeah. So do you have a special place? I mean, is there a way that in, kind of in you the carve it out? No, <laughs> not yet. In my old house, I kind of miss yeah. my special place, yeah. though. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I do think that there's something about a consistent time mm -hmm. and a consistent yeah. place. Yeah. Yes. And you're kind of saying that even with on your way to work, this is my time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's really helped me. And even keeping my Bible and my journal mm -hmm. out yeah. because out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. There's something about that visual reminder and just knowing I'm going to meet with the Lord during this time. You know, I think there's that pressure of, oh, it has to be in the morning. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and finding when is your time. Yeah, sometimes with small true. kids, it's during naps. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's driving, but finding that and then keeping it up, keeping it up. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really kind of helped me to keep it at the forefront. Yes. So when it comes, we've talked about reading the Word, mm -hmm. but um, one of the things that really has helped me is memorizing the Word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I had such a roadblock in my head against mm -hmm. that. But when we were at a youth conference, they had uh, pe all of us stand up who had one verse with the reference memorized. Well, maybe 150 out of 700 people stood up, which mm -hmm. isn't very impressive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then they said, how many of you have two? People started sitting down, three. By the time they got to five, there was only a handful of wow. people standing. And I had to be one of them that sat down because while I knew a lot of, well, I knew somewhat yeah. the verse, yeah. right. I couldn't tell you where it was found. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know word for word. And I'm telling you, as I began to make that a matter of priority, things began to change. And it was exciting because my kids started picking up on it yeah. to a point that they began to hide God's Word in their lives. Yeah. Um, do any of you do regular scripture memorization? Well, Jeff and I made it a goal last year to do more. And sometimes I'll feel like God gives me, you know, a a theme for the year, maybe it's right. peace or something like that. And so then I'll try and find um, one, maybe just a section of verses or a chapter that I work on for the whole year to memorize. Oh, so that it's not, you know, sometimes you feel like I have to memorize a verse a day or, a ver you know, and you're like, ah, um, my brain doesn't yeah, work that great set anymore. Up to <laughs> fail. Right. right. So, um, Last year, I just had, I think it was maybe 10 verses. It was a Psalms that I felt like was my mm -hmm. chapter for the year. And so all throughout the year, I would just go back to it every day. And so even if I would have, you know, devotional time reading other things, I always came back that I was memorizing this. And it was really great because, um, you know, I feel really a good sense of accomplishment, but it took me a year. So yeah. <laughs> it's not like I was overly ambitious, but, but it's it there. was there. And yeah. it's, I bet it's still it's there. It's still there. Yeah. And that's so exciting. So does music or worship play a special part? I, I know as a worship leader, it probably has to for you. Yeah, I mean, I love to put my Bible on the piano and, and sit and pray and sing, but I know that that's not accessible for everybody. Mm -hmm. So, you know, finding a CD that mm -hmm. just ministers to your heart, having a playlist maybe that yes. you put together yeah, of a yeah. few things that you can worship. And there, there are times that I don't like any music because sometimes mm -hmm. I just want to listen, mm -hmm. but I think it just can help kind of usher in the presence of the Lord and spending time in personal worship, I think yes. is so important. We're used to yes. doing 
looking at worship as simply a corporate thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I think learning to cultivate a personal worship life where it's yes. just you and God and how you experience yes. that in a personal way when no one else is around exactly. is a really yeah. important thing. Well, I really am coming to believe that <laughs> the truest form of worship is how I worship in private. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really, because it's so easy to get caught up into just the motions mm -hmm. and the rituals of worship. Mm -hmm. uh, and so setting time in my quiet time just to sing a song to the Lord or to raise my hands or just to even play. I love playing a worship CD and just soaking, mm -hmm. just soaking in the presence of the Lord. Well, part two of this series is coming soon. But while we're waiting for that, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What tips and tools have helped you have a more meaningful quiet time? And if you haven't already done it, I hope you'll subscribe to this channel. If you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified immediately when the next video airs. Well, until then, my friend, keep choosing the better part.